Hello and welcome to this little look into the making of episode 2 of my new sci-fi horror series, The Afterworld. My name is Ali and I'm the director, animator, editor, colorist, but I simply call myself the creator of the series. Aside from my cast of two, I am the sole person working on this project. I don't know how closely people have followed my little journey into filmmaking here on YouTube, but I've been putting out content since 2019. Not consistently, mind you, but here and there. And so I suppose not everyone who views my short films knows that it is literally my lonesome self on my own desktop computer doing this work. My knowledge of the 3D software Blender, which is the software I mainly use now to accomplish my short films, is severely limited. I don't have more than a year's experience using Blender, and everything I know has come from tutorials I've watched on YouTube mostly, and having specific questions answered in forums, etc. Having less than a year's experience working with Blender means that I don't know how to do certain things to Hollywood quality. Of course, if a certain thing serves the story, I will attempt to create it to the best of my ability. However, this channel is, first and foremost, a huge experiment of sorts into filmmaking, into storytelling, as well as image composition to best convey themes. If you came along for the journey, and you find what's on screen good enough to function in the story and fun, then I'm glad you're here and you being part of the audience means the world to me. With that out of the way, after the relatively overwhelming interest in the first episode, I continued and made the second episode, which has been received very well, thankfully. I wanted to give a bit of a breakdown about what goes into making these episodes and demonstrate that anyone can do this. I want these episodes to serve as inspiration, to show you that, with dedication, you can achieve what you want. Yes, working on a single PC is time consuming, animation in general can be tedious and frustrating at times, but with enough diligence you can create what you see in your imagination. Now, as a general comment, do I have all the story written out for the Afterworld series? No. But I do have a direction I want to go with. But I guess we'll see how far we can go on this journey, I suppose. Your interest and support keeps me motivated and on track. Anyway, let me share some insight into the making of this episode. Please watch my video on the making of episode 1, linked here, to see the general idea of what was done for the first episode. <laughs> of course, with episode 2, I wanted to push the limit with what I could do from a technical standpoint. The first episode was a huge step for me in terms of learning a ton of different things. The most demanding being scanning my actors and, through the magic of photogrammetry, make digital duplicates of them. These would be used from a distance, of course, since they aren't hugely detailed, but would serve as a stunt double, as it were, for shots where I wasn't prepared to put an actor in danger. The notable example from episode 2 would be when the Rex droid launches Zara into the distance. Since the technology now exists to be able to commit to such a shot, I wrote it into the story and tried my best to integrate it seamlessly. This was also the case with the wide shots of Sam underwater. We filmed my brother Ray above water, obviously. I divided the shot list into what I wanted his body to be in, where his digital double would be animated in his place, and the shots where we were more of a medium shot or a close-up, where my brother would perform. 
I directed him to disregard things like bobbing up and down to simulate being submerged and kind of hovering in midair. This would be achieved during the composition in Blender using a simple noise modifier applied to the image's plane layer that was the footage of him. We also experimented with different shot angles to give the audience a better understanding of the underwater environment. I cycled between wide shots, medium shots, POV shots, as well as aerial and undershots, because I think the variety of shots helps to increase production value. It's there, it's going around! <laughs> oh, it's okay. He is going around. More emotion. More emotion on the... Go! If you watched the behind the scenes video of episode 1, you'd know that the surface of the lake was created using geometry nodes, which was the first time for me working with such a setup. It was definitely daunting in the beginning, but after watching a few tutorials on the topic, I made a very simple setup consisting of groups of assets organised into collections, and then scattered across the surface, which turned out to be far more time efficient than using a particle system. The difference between the lake from episode 1 to episode 2 was the incorporation of water movement on the lake's surface. Although I was okay with a dead still lake, I experimented with different looks to achieve an animated water surface through a bump node, rather than accumulating more and more vertices and taxing my computer further with an ocean modifier, for example. Dad, I haven't seen one of these before. What do we do? Well, I don't know. With the action moving underwater in this episode, I knew I had to tackle some water simulations. There are a couple of them in this episode, each taking more than a whole day to bake and render. In the end, I was somewhat satisfied by the look of each of the splashes, so I kept most. Sometimes something you've created just doesn't work and needs to be discarded. This was the same story with the shot of Sam sinking into the lake. The original shot looked like this. But after much thought and having completed the majority of the episode, I decided to tackle the shot again. I guess I wasn't happy with the bubbles, which were a particle system, which seemed to swarm around him like insects or something. I studied up on how to get the bubbles to rise from him as he sunk and the shot that made it into the final product was the result. And the what is, it's a big deal. It's like, what? What? Yeah, like a bird. Ready? What? The shark. Oh boy, the shark. This bloke was quite a feat of 3D goodness and a massive challenge at the same time as I didn't have the best knowledge of how to animate him to sell the idea that he was effortlessly swimming. The model has been generously contributed to the blend swap marketplace by its creator, Quentin Leduff. This guy is a genius. He also has made a short film called Shinkai here on YouTube where this amazing shark model is featured. After watching the film, I fell in love with this creature and Quentin has kindly donated the files free of charge. A massive thank you to him. It was also the aim of this series to feature other artists' work. And wherever possible, I will try to showcase amazing Blender creations permitted I discover how to animate them successfully. In the case of the shark, this guy was a monster. The general idea here is he was constrained to a curve which helps give him that smooth movement, as if gliding through water. I tried my best to replicate reality, though Quentin does a far superior job of that in his film, so definitely check that out, the link is in the description. The shark returns for episode 3, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already, to see if he ends up catching Sam. The episode's final shots were by far the most challenging to nail. Zara has made her way out of the lake and onto a rocky beach of sorts. She's distraught because her father is nowhere to be seen. Before she decides what to do, a deep rumbling shakes the beach. 
She turns back to the shoreline and then the earth opens as something burrows through the ground heading for her. She's awestruck by the sight. Now this took a good part of a week to be okay looking. For guidance, I was aided by the tutorial Granite Films put up on his YouTube channel. This tutorial was very thorough, yet if I can understand it then anyone can. <laughs> I changed many aspects of the design, even foregoing the smoke simulations that he added in the tutorial simply because they were far too time consuming on my end. All in all, Granite Films done a much better job of this than I did but I thank him dearly for such an amazing tutorial. All right, scream. <laughs> Why are you smiling afterwards? Start again. <laughs> when it comes to capturing the footage, this was all recorded on my iPhone using the Filmic Pro app, which is an app that basically hijacks your phone's camera and allows you to set things like white balance, exposure and focus, which are all highly desirable aspects that should be fixed before pressing the record button. These are most of the technical aspects related to capturing the footage. What is far more challenging is directing the actors to perform in a way that matches your vision for the shot. Not that the actors I had, my brother and his daughter, were horrible to work with or anything, but I had to constantly remind myself that they do have to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to imagining what's going on around them. Because remember, all we had was a green screen behind the actors. The performances came from pure imagination. Working with children in particular can be demanding, but as far as directing is concerned, I found myself having to articulate things in different ways, essentially experimenting with the best way to communicate an idea from my own head into the imagination of the child. My niece Fatima, who plays Zara, is an exceptionally gifted child with quite a wide range of emotions she can draw upon on demand. It was a pleasure working with her. Try it a bit more. <laughs> it's, too, it's too crazy. The eyes are crazy. They're moving about too much. My brother Ray, on the other hand, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> he makes everything more fun and I'm indebted to him for aiding me with bringing my vision to life. I hope this behind the scenes look into the making of episode two of The Afterworld has been informative and entertaining. I hope you learned something and I hope it's given you the confidence to start something of your own as well. Because if I can do it, anyone can. Please consider supporting my efforts by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Be on the lookout for episode three coming soon. It's currently in post-production, so it won't be too long. Thank you for your attention.